Hey guys, uh, I did say I would uh, show you how to make this. This is a, an adjustable arbor. Um, and what the point of this is, this is going to be able to expand, kind of like this, kind of out from the middle, whoop, like this, so that it can hold a ring of various sizes. And now I've got this machined down to a three, four, five, six, seven, and eight size ring. You can kind of see that here, that kind of graduated way. And uh, they sell some online. There were maybe one or two sellers, but to be honest, um, they wanted like 50 bucks a piece, and I just bought my brand new tool, and notice uh, some of you uh, said, oh, he's going to lose a finger, this guy's a moron, he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, I'm here to show you that all my fingers are intact and still ready to go. So thank you for your concern, but I still have them. So uh, how this works, basically, is uh, you have a piece of aluminum, which I'm going to show you how to make out of this blank here. So rather than 50 bucks or, um, what was this, probably a dollar's worth of aluminum rod at uh, about one inch in size, and I've got myself a set of rings. So for a ring shaper, all, I, all I'm going to do is kind of just make sure that these are the right size. But here's what happens. I've got a, a bolt here that is threaded just a little bit the way through, not all the way. And what, I'm, what it does is it sits inside here, and it's threaded right about here all the way down. You can see I've got it here. And what it does is this angled piece will then push on the sides of this and pull it out this way. And it sits in the lathe so that you can hold round objects. Now, I found a few online that were like uh, pi uh, you know engine engine valve guide uh, holders, but those are you know they're you know, way too big for what I'm doing, and I need something custom. So uh, this this is uh, the one I made. Now you're going to have to do some cuts in it, and you can see where the the bandsaw started to walk a little bit. A uh, couple things you want to make sure it's past. Uh, where you want to expand because the expansion point is going to be here instead of up here. So if I wanted to do the size 8, which is this one, um, you, we want it to expand down here so that it pulls out. It will hold this area rather than kind of where its, its fulcrum or bending point will be, which is here. Uh, so let me show you how this works. Uh, I'll show you how to, how to make one, but I basically, if you can watch real carefully, you can watch it expand. And usually right there is enough to where it'll hold the ring steady and in place, and you don't need it very much. Now, the other nice thing is, is uh, you can resize these. You take the bolt out, and then you kind of clamp it back, and it'll go retake its shape. You can make this out of any material. I made this out of aluminum just because it was cheap, and I had it, I had it handy. It was laying around. Um, it's probably not the softest, or it's not the, uh, excuse me, not the hardest material, so you might, if you want to do tool steel, you can. I don't have the tooling to do tool steel. Um, and I'm, you know, this is just a hobby. This is not something I'm going to do professionally, so um, I can get away with something a little bit softer, a little bit more malleable. And the idea being that I can hold, this will, the, the aluminum will not mar the inside of harder materials that I might be using, marble, you know, that sort of stuff. So softer metal here, use this as the sacrificial lamb, so to speak. Uh, now, a friend of mine said, well, why don't you just make one per ring size? I said, well, I could do that, but that's duplicating my effort. Uh, because if I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, six different sizes on one piece, well, then certainly uh, it's going to make you know changing tools in and out a lot easier. So well, I'll start with, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, is I'm going to face the material and make sure that it's nice and flat, but then I'm going to drill a hole all the way through, and as if you can see that, there's a, a small hole here, right, the size of a quarter 20 bolt, which is what this is, and then I'm going to draw, drill a bigger hole through the middle of it that will allow uh, the bolt to, oops, excuse me, uh, which will allow the bolt to kind of rest in there so it's not threaded all the way, because you notice the bolt's not threaded all the way. So it'll give us some expansion room. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I, I'll kind of chamfered this end a little bit. I didn't have a bit small enough to be able to get in there, so I just used a file. But basically, this is, you know, this is a pretty easy project to do. I found that coming from the back side to tap it this way, from the back this way, where the taps end here, was probably the best bet, uh, just because my tap wasn't long enough to get all the way through. So let's go ahead, and um, now that I've explained it, I will show you how to make one, and I'll speed up some of the things so you don't have to sit there and watch 
all the stuff, but you can watch me make a few chips. Thanks a lot. Before we get too far, let me show you some of the tools I'll be using. I'll be using a chuck that will go in the end here so I can drill my holes. I'll be also using a set of carbide tip bits. Now I know this is soft aluminum and probably a bit overkill, but hey, when in doubt, go big. Uh, I've got a set of uh, longer boring ones as well. I'll put a link in the uh, description down below so you guys can check those out if you want to. I also have a ring sizer uh, to help me out with the sizes. I also have uh, a set of ring uh, actual sizes so that I at least know how big to make them. How big to make my my arbor, of course. Uh, I'm also going to use a series of like uh, sandpapers and things like that to get it to get it close. Uh, but I've used a, these kind of diamond tip files as well uh, to help me along with the project. Uh, but remember also this this center bore bit. <laughs> All right, so what I have is I have a 1364th bit that I'm going to drill all the way through my piece here. Um, hopefully it's long enough to go all the way through, uh, but I got it in my chuck, and we're going to go ahead and drill all the way through slowly. Thankfully, the, this aluminum is really, really soft, uh, so we can slice through it pretty quickly. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a slightly larger hole in here so that there's room for our bolt to expand through it. And what I've done is I, uh, from my schematics, I made a drawing of what I'm doing. Now this is the smaller one, but I'm make, basically making just a slightly larger one. And I've got about a, you know, this one's going to be a little bit bigger, so the shank won't happen until about one and seven eighths. So I've gone ahead and marked right around one and a half inches here so that uh, there will be plenty of teeth for our bolt to dig into and start pulling. So don't want this drill bit to go all the way through because it's not the size that we want to have tapped. All right, so now that we've got this hole slightly enlarged for our bolt and drilled all the way through, what I'm gonna do, I made a mark here because according to my schematics, I've got uh, a number of steps that I need to make. I'm only going to do five. This one has six. This starts at uh, three. That's uh, so ring size three and goes all the way up to ring size eight. This next one's going to have eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's only going to be five. So we're going to put five steps in here. I made a little mark for myself uh, to periodically check because I'm going to start with the largest first, 13. And I know there's a more precise way to do this, but I want this to fit just s not snugly, but just a little tad loose. So there's room for this expanse, so I'm going to go over on this a little loose. marked my line here because we've got uh, size 13 down we're gonna do the next step which is size 12 so I'm just gonna get it started make sure it fits right and then I'm just gonna run it down now that I've got kind of a good base point this is gonna be my collar so at the very end it's gonna be the stop for it. it's just kind of recognizing where I'm at but this right here is, is my line that's that's what I'm going for <laughs>
Okay, here we go. We've got the start, basically. So I had a little bit of extra room on this side. Uh, my dimensions for my schematic that were on this page were for a six groove setup, and so I used my measurements for the six groove. Now I happen to be doing larger sizes this time, uh, so I kind of wanted to make a thicker band with it. So you can see there's a little bit more meat to grab because if I'm doing bigger rings, chances are the person has a bigger finger and has a wider band, so I want to have some more meat. Now, mind you, this does not have to be precise because all we're getting to do is we're just kind of getting it in place and then clamping it. So it just has to be kind of close. And I'm sure there's a better way to do it if you, you know, were to get a set of calipers out and were to do it right. I'm sure there's a much more precise way to do it, but this is the quick and dirty way. Now that we've got our uh, hole drilled, and you can see where it's kind of stepped there, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tap the hole from the back uh, because it looks like it stops right about here. So we'll have the, the bolt should be able to engage en uh, enough threads to get this moving. Again, soft material, don't need to really go to town on it, but hopefully this will act as a little spreader bar for these guys once we cut the slits in it. So let's go ahead and tap the back. <laughs> So one thing is I do apologize. I did have to cut this prior. Now, normally I would cut at the very end, and you'll notice that the, uh, the uh, saw I was using did not want to cut in a straight line because it was one of those coming down uh, saws, so it didn't, I didn't have a straight band saw to work with. Uh, but uh, I had very limited time to work with it, so I had to run out, and I couldn't, I couldn't do all the things I wanted to first, but normally cutting would be the last step before I tapped it, before I ran uh, you know, the taper here. So anyway, just, just FYI, I would cut at the very last. Don't, don't do what I did because that uh, cutting it midway makes it a little bit tougher to, to uh, turn this. So we've uh, tapped the hole in here. Our bolt will go in. And that's working just fine. However, what we'll notice is that it is flat on here and there's no place for this to kind of go in there to make it a little bit more flush. So uh, my, I don't have any tools small enough to be able to put a uh, taper on it, so what I'm just going to use is a diamond file. Okay, now let's just double check. Now I've got a little bit of a taper on the inside for that bolt to fit into. I think, now that I blew this all out for junk and filings, I'm going to go ahead and test. Breaks. Yep, there it goes. She expands and it fits fairly nice. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just do that little step just so that it looks a little bit nicer. Now I could come in and, and you know, make this a little bit prettier end, but you know, to be honest, uh, it gets the job done and you got to love having a tool that can make other tools. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful and uh, good luck making your own.